welcome back to my Let's Build series. So last time we built our frame, so we've put everything together, we've made sure it's all secured, and I have between put the uh, cable in there. So today we're going to be looking at our stack. So our stack is the Holybro uh, Keto, well, Holybro Kukute um, Tico ESC with Tico ESC. So it's a flight controller and ESC all in one nice single stack so that's quite a nice thing to have so it should make this a nice easy build so I'm going to do something a little bit different with this um, I could put the stack in like this but I think in this frame it might work slightly better if I take it apart and put it upside down so first of all what I'm going to do is take it apart here it is all taken apart so you get various different standoffs you get some end caps you get some straight standoffs and you get some standoffs with a screw on them you also get these little tiny little um, shims in here and the reason they're in there is they just give a little bit of height on the um, on the ESC um, so that you don't mess up the uh, heat sh uh, the heat shield that's been put on the top of that the the, the heat sink that's the one um, so what else do you get in the in the box well you get two cables um, I actually had an issue with this one, so um, if you can see here, if I just hold my hand out flat, that wire there is slightly damaged. Now I've contacted Hollybro and they are sending me a new one, so really good stuff from Hollybro there. Um, so you get a short cable and a long cable, so if you want to adjust what you need to do. Um, you also get a little replacement um, bit of foam for the soft mounting, and you also get another, you get two of those, and you also get an, a spare ribbon cable for, for the soft mounted gyro. So that's pretty pretty good, really. So you get all the things you, you need in there. Now, what's really important to mention at this point is the first thing I do whenever I buy any new flight controller, etc., is I plug it into my computer and make sure that um, it works. So all you need to do there is plug it in via USB um, and just fire it up and make sure that it works. So uh, Beta Flight is installed on this, so I go onto Beta Flight, um, I open it up, I make sure I can see the the flight controller I make sure that, that when I move it, it it works correctly and I then feel comfortable that it's actually in, in, in good quality at that point. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning at this point is what I'm going to do with this build is I will probably do some slight variations on the heights um, here to make everything fit really nicely. Now you don't have to do that, it will fit, I have checked um, but if you want to adjust it to make it perfect what you probably need is a, is a set of nylon standoffs so this set I think I got from Amazon for like two or three pounds, so it's hardly anything. And you get various sizes and little shims and various bits and pieces. So you don't need this, but it does help um, and it's useful for when you're doing anything else with quads further in the future. So let's now talk about the individual components. So we're going to start with the ESC. Now this ESC is a 4-in-1 ESC. It is a 35 amp uh, BL Heli 32 ESC and what that means is that it is a well, you, instead of having an ESC on each arm they're, they're all in here so all the MOSFETs and various bits and pieces are already pre-installed um, so and it also outputs telemetry from your ESC so that will feed back in via, system, via your um, little cable here to your flight controller so I haven't had that before so we'll see what results that brings us um, it is a very simple ESC so you simply have um, your connectors for where you put your battery in, so that will be your XT60, and you will then have your motor outputs, and they are, these three are motor 3, these three are motor 1, these three are motor 2, and these three are motor 4. If you are not used to building mini quads, this will probably seem a bit odd to you, but when you get into, when we go into um, a little bit later in a different video, we will start talking about how that actually works, um, and how the motor numbering works. It doesn't have a BEC. And a BEC is a um, 5 volt output or a, a controlled filtered output. So you will not be able to run any um, sort, you wouldn't be able to plug this into a flight control, your um, receiver or anything like that. So what I will be doing is I will be running off this a capacitor, which I should have somewhere floating around, which I don't have in front of me at this moment in time. So I'll be running a little capacitor off there. The reason I'm doing that is just to smooth out the spikes. Um, mini quads tend to be a bit tetchy in terms of uh, the when you open the power there's a big spike of power when you let off it can um, just make your video quality terrible or, or have a few issues so I put a capacitor on there so I'll be soldering that directly on there and my some of my things have just fallen off my desk um, 
and I will also be soldering directly to this my video transmitter. Now I can get away with that simply because the fact that my video transmitter will take from 7 volts to 27 volts so it will take direct battery current from from uh, the battery so I will be doing that. Now the reason, one of the reasons I'm doing that is because this has a minimum voltage of 7 volts and if my flight controller only outputs 5 volts that means I won't be getting it, it will either A not work or B work really badly. Okay so that takes us on to the, the main meat, the flight controller. So the flight controller here has various pins on here. Now the text on here is really not easy to read but I have found a quite a good diagram that, um, or that Hollybro provide if you go to their website that you can see all the pins that you need to be considering to, to solder to. So from memory the ones I'm really interested in are, are these ones here. So this will control my buzzer and my LED lights on the back. So one, two, three, four. Um, then I will need to use, I think it's uh, the receiver R3 from memory. So that will be where my S bus connection goes to. And I'll need some 5 volt and ground for that. I will need to have at least one of these for my um, smart audio. So I'll be connecting smart audio up to this. Smart audio is a way of controlling your video transmitter. Um, from your um, from your flight controller via the OSD. I'll show you that later on. In fact, sorry, it's not Smart Audio. I'm using um, the Matex, so it's actually Tramp um, Telemetry, I think it's called. Um, does the same thing. Um, and I will also then need to be connecting the video in and the video out so I get my um, video feed. I won't be connecting the camera to this because I'm going to use the filtered um, video from the Matex video transmitter to make all that work so I'll be showing you that in later videos. Okay so let's get on to some soldering. So we're now going to start doing our first solders uh, in this build. Um, I was talking to someone the other day and they were petrified of getting into FPV because they believed they couldn't solder. I will tell you today that I was terrible at soldering when I first did my first build um, but over time I've become passable. I am not going to class myself as the best solder in the world um, but I can certainly get by. I've had very few solder joints fail in the last few years so or last few months really and um, so I'm, I'm not going to say it's easy but you will get the hang of it and the more you do it the easier it will be for you to to get going. So we'll start with something nice and easy which is just our, our ESC. So what you want is a soldering iron. I've got mine about 400 degrees uh, C at this moment in time just to give myself um, some good heat. Heat helps but you don't want to lift any of the pads so you don't want to heat the pads up too much. Um, you need some good quality solder and you probably need a little something to clean the tip when you're uh, when you're working way through it. A good clean tip means it's nice and easy to work on. If you're having problems getting solder to work then adding a little bit of flux paste will help things go through. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, my soldering iron give the tip a good clean and my camera is going to go nuts at this point and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny little bit of solder on the tip like so you get a little bit of smoke in your screen and I'm just going to work my way round one to each of the pads so I'm just going to place a little bit of place the, the tip onto the pad itself try and heat the pad up and I'm just going to place the solder on and then just solder that up. And what we're doing now is called tinning. And that means that when we put the wires on, they'll be nice and easy to connect to. So, pad on. Okay, so now we've uh, soldered up all of the motor wire, where the motor wires connect to the ESC, we're just going to solder up where the XT60 connects. So, same principle applies, nice clean tip, a little bit of solder. Yep. 
Okay, and then because what we're going to do with this build, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Apologies, it's not the best solder in the world, but I'm about to uh, reconnect that all up anyway. So when I reflow all the solder, that should uh, be fine. Right, guys, I've always said I'd be honest with you, and I'm going to be honest with you now. Um, so what I was doing before, I was trying to install this the right way up and the right way round, um, with the cables going um, towards the top plate. Um, and what I found was when I was trying to put it together, it was causing me no end of troubles, and it really wasn't working. So what I've done instead is I've switched the board so this is now upside down. So this will be the wrong way up when you when you build the quad. Um, but what we'll do is we'll readdress these motors, which is actually really straightforward to do, and I will do that uh, later on in this video. But I just wanted to be honest with you, that's what I've done, and I think that's going to be the right way of doing it. So now once we've got these in place, I can snip these wires down and then, uh, then solder it up. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to get the wire, find the right length for it, Snip it so I've just got a little bit of extra length there. Take the end of the cable, give it a little twist, get the soldering iron, a little bit of solder on the uh, on the old cable. There we go. Then over where it needs to be. Just get it tacked on. Get a knife or a pair of tweezers. Okay, so now everything's soldered up, so all the ESCs are now soldered up. Don't worry about where they are, where they are soldered to, because we can change the mult mult motors as long as the threes are together. So these three go to that motor, these three go to that motor, these three go to that motor, and three those three go to that motor. We're all fine, and we can sort out motor direction when we're in the software. So the last thing I need to do with this part is to revisit this XT60. Um, so I just need to work out what I'm going to do there. I'm tempted whether I'm going to cut this off, but what I'll do is I will decide what I'm going to do and then I'll show you what I did and talk about it. Right, so what I've decided to do, instead of using this little rubber grommety thing that goes in the that goes in this hole, um, I just couldn't get the angle right for what I wanted. Um, for what I've got here, it just didn't work. So what I've done instead is I've wrapped a cable tie round, round the cable and I've put one through the loop there and that then gives me this position here where this cable is now sitting up nicely and will be out of position for the for the prop so give me a nice position to plug into so um, the last things I need to do is I need to run some cables for some auxiliary power to different parts of it so I've just got two bits of uh, silicon wire these are I can't what gauge they are um, it's slightly thicker so it's a, probably around about a 22 uh, gauge wire so all I'm going to do is as usual just going to solder um, solder the tips up to make sure they're all ready to rock and roll and then I solder them to the XT60. Okay so as you can see from the pitch here I simply soldered them onto the bottom end of the XT60 and then I routed them out to where I would need them later on. Um, this is the end of this part of the video. Um, I'll be following on with uh, soldering up the flight controller um, so hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time.